Hey, before we start, we're launching an exclusive Minute Food community at patreon.com slash Minute Food. Stick around until the end of the video for all the details. There I was minding my own business when, huh? What? What do you mean that getting a box of packaged up food delivered directly to my door is good for the environment? That doesn't make any sense. So I did what any food loving nerd with a YouTube channel would do. I ordered a meal kit and a box of groceries, and while I waited for them to arrive, I started digging into the research and talking to experts. And what's going on here is actually way more interesting than I expected. And it's kind of changed how I think about groceries and what it means to be green. This is Minute Food. First, here's our patented, nobody's paying us to say this stuff disclaimer. This video is not sponsored by a meal kit or a grocery delivery company. We don't have an agenda here. I just really want to find out what's actually going on with these claims about sustainability. So first, I want to tell you what most of the published science out there says, which is that meals from meal kits and grocery delivery boxes do on average have smaller carbon footprints than the same meals created with ingredients from the store. One study calculated that on average, meals from a meal kit have about 33% lower greenhouse gas emissions. Yes, there's obviously a lot more to sustainability than just greenhouse gas emissions, but it's a convenient measure because researchers can quantify the emissions of a given food from the time it's produced to when it's used or isn't used. Here's the emissions breakdown for a chicken recipe from a meal kit and for the very same meal made with groceries from a store. And yep, the emissions from the packaging of food, along with its disposal and any processing and prep of ingredients, are way larger for the meal kit than from the store-bought ingredients. Which is not at all surprising to me based on the mountain of packaging I got in my meal kit. Tons of ice packs and bags and clamshell packages and a zillion little packages of stuff. Ugh, I mean, I feel guilty just looking at all this packaging. But there are two other sources of emissions that are a lot smaller for the meal kit meal than the grocery store meal. In fact, those two reductions more than offset the extra emissions from all that extra packaging. The first of these is food waste. Here in the US, about 40% of the food that's produced is wasted. Food that's not that attractive, although it's fine to eat, gets tossed before it even makes it to the store. Stuff in a store that doesn't sell gets tossed after its best buy date. And even a lot of what people buy and bring home gets tossed. Meal kit companies, on the other hand, source their own ingredients, plan the recipes based on those ingredients to minimize their food waste. After all, wasted food is wasted money. And portion those ingredients so you get just what you need for that meal, basically leaving you less food to waste. And yes, sadly for us leftover lovers, that does mean less leftovers. There's also what's called the last mile problem. Most people drive their own cars to the store and back each time they need groceries, creating lots of emissions along the way. With meal kits or grocery delivery, a much smaller number of delivery vehicles take planned routes through an area, making stops along the way. Studies have found that a route like this, even in a gas-guzzling delivery vehicle, can cut emissions by more than half. To ensure that boxes survive those long, perilous mass deliveries, and to portion those ingredients in a way that reduces food waste, companies add all that extra packaging. So yes, the packaging in a meal kit or delivery box looks terrible and absolutely does contribute a bunch of emissions to the food inside. But if that packaging does enough to mitigate some of the other environmentally costly stuff tied up in a meal, it can weirdly make a box of food greener. The idea that more packaging can make food more sustainable kind of breaks my brain. But there are actually a bunch of other examples of this plasticky paradox out there. Like this egg carton has an additional plastic shell inside, which just looks like a bunch of extra stuff I have to toss. But that shell significantly reduces breakage and therefore wastage of the eggs inside. And check out these bagged peppers. Since they're sealed up in their own little microclimate, they can stay fresh several times longer than their naked brethren. So they're more likely to get sold and eaten before they go bad. That's not to say that single-use packaging is a good thing. It definitely isn't, and we should absolutely reduce it where and when we can and continue to move toward better options. But packaging can, under certain circumstances, make food less unsustainable. Note my careful use of the term certain circumstances, though. 
Like, if you were gonna chow down on those peppers on the way home from the store, the plastic is irrelevant. The naked one would certainly be the greener choice. So this does get very fuzzy very quickly. And there are similar caveats to the meal kit research, because it's based on averages. The average behavior of shoppers and retailers and what have you. And these averages, at least in the US, are pretty abysmal. The average shopper drives more than four miles to the grocery store. They buy five meals or fewer at a time. They throw away somewhere around a quarter of their food. Their stores don't donate out-of-date food, and so on. So depending on your own shopping habits, the calculus here can change. Like if you bike or walk to the store, buy a ton of food in one trip, grow your own food, are really good about not wasting food, or whatever. Meal kits could easily lose their edge as far as sustainability. After diving into all this, my takeaway isn't so much that meal kits are more or less green than grocery shopping. That's complicated and messy and depends on lots of individual circumstances. What is clear, though, is that the choices are much more comparable than I thought. Mostly because the issues that seem the most obvious, like that mountain of packaging, aren't necessarily the biggest sustainability-related problems. So while I am not suddenly a meal kit convert, I no longer feel guilty about the occasional box of delivered food showing up on my doorstep. I also have a better handle on what those big but less obvious problems are, and how I can make them less problemy, like reducing my own last mile trips and tossing less stuff. And actually, that the overwhelming issue here isn't packaging or last mile or food waste, but something else entirely, the food itself. Choosing more sustainable foods is by a long shot the biggest change you can make if you want to eat greener. But whew, that's a whole other video for a whole other day. If you are hungry for that video, or for more Minute Food in general, don't move. Because right here, right now, we are officially launching an exclusive community over at Patreon to help us cook up bigger, better, tastier, punnier videos. You can learn more at patreon.com slash minutefood. But basically, we want to make sure viewers, rather than ads or algorithms or sponsors, are the driving force behind our channel. So if you appreciate what Minute Food puts out into the world, maybe you've gotten some tips that have helped you in the kitchen, laughed at a weird reference we've made, or just like to argue with us about how to care for cast iron, please consider joining us. Not only will you literally be making Minute Food happen, you'll get access to all sorts of awesome exclusive perks, like input on future topics, digital downloads, merch discounts, your name in lights, or at least some dazzling digital font, early access to videos, and behind the scenes videos from the total chaos that is my kitchen. Come join us at patreon.com slash minutefood.